Gilbert here, and a little bit later on in the program, I'll be discussing the fact that there's been fresh evidence that throws new light on that fateful fight at the OK Corral. We're talking wired up here. And Doc Holiday, OK? Western writer Gary Dobbs from Pont de has been assessing how, how it might change our views on what really happened back in 1881. The hell he will, as they say. But before that, I'll be joined by Professor. Sometimes they're not lies, sometimes they're exaggerated truth, sometimes they're truth as we knew it at the time until fresh evidence comes along. And, well, there's fresh evidence now about a very, very famous up and doing in the western fields of uh, America, the Wild West we're talking about. And it's probably the most infamous showdown in West, uh, Wild West history. Inspired a string of Hollywood films, isn't it? And shaped the well, mythologist of the frontier, but now new light is being shed on the facts of what really happened at the O.K. Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. New eyewitness accounts have been discovered in a local storage room, and Western writer Gary Dobbs from Pont de has been studying them, and I'm pleased to say that Gary joins me. Gary, you're welcome again. How are you, all right? Thank you. Good. Now, then, this really is the stuff of legend now we're talking about here. Can you just remind us now of the basics of what happened here? There was a confrontation, wasn't there? It was. It'd been building up for some time between yeah. um, two factions, the Herb faction and um, a, a group of semi-outlaws, cattle wrestlers, um, uh, led by Ike Clanton. Yes. Um, and it came to a showdown in October um, 1881. Um, in the famous gunfight, which last, lasted for 30 seconds, and there were 34 shots fired. 34 and 30 seconds, and three dead at the end of it? Um, two dead immediately. Uh, okay. Bill, Billy Clanton also died, but he died later of his injuries. Right. Um, and the only one, the only participant that didn't suffer any injury at all was Wyatt Earp. Yeah, quite. Well, Doc Holliday injured then? Because Doc Holliday was grazed on the hip. Yeah. Um, Morgan Earp was shot in the upper back by the shoulder blades, and uh, Virgil Earp was hit in the thigh, I believe. All right, because Virgil Earp had been in a kind of an arrangement with one of the Clanton boys or something, with with regard to getting information. He was chief of police or something, Virgil, wasn't he? And he got some information from Clanton, and Clanton thought, well, if he tells people now that I've given him information about some stagecoach robbery, I'll be in the uh, well, in the pickies, as it were, with uh, my mates. Yeah, yeah, that was Ike Clankton who did the deal, and Wyatt Earp yeah. was in on the deal as well, yeah. because Wyatt Earp was um, also running for law office, right. and there was a big reward offered, and it was felt that if they brought the culprits of this, um, it was a stage robbery to, to justice, yeah. then um, it helped in his, you know, in him, uh, going for office. Ike Clankton became worried that, um, because Doc Holliday was friendly with Wyatt Earp, but he was also friendly with the, the bandits that robbed the stage, oh. and he was worried that he was going to get out, and he basically... Um, I planned and more or less initiated the gunfight. Yeah. Doc Holliday was a, an incredible man, wasn't he? Because he was consumptive, wasn't he? He had something like TB, he wasn't very well. He, he was, yeah. He was, um, he was at, at the time of the, the, the gunfight, he was in very poorly, you know. Yes. But um, he, was a, he was a remarkable man, and his friendship with Wyatt Earp was as strong as any friendship I've ever read about, yeah, you know. Yeah, and, um, well, this now, you know, features, I, I read it and I agree with it, with the assessment really of talking about events in America. And, of course, the, the Battle of the Little Bighorn with General Custer comes immediately to mind. Uh, others would argue about the Civil War, but another one that comes to mind is the Alamo, of course. And then everyone knows that something happened at the OK Corral, don't they, in history about the Wild West. They do. I, I read um, somewhere that in... Um Association with the Wild West, I think, is second only to the Little Big One. Is it? It's probably the See, second. Yeah. Alamo must be third then. They're in the top three. I, them, I think the Alamo probably would come third. Yeah. Yeah. Quite. Do you know I've seen some of these films now? Bert Lancaster was one, wasn't he? And then now, uh, who was with him now? It was um, Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas, wasn't he? He was Doc Holliday. He wasn't was. He? Yeah. yeah, that's right. And the one I liked was Kevin Costner, which was much more recent. Now. Actually, that took a longer view of it because he, he sort of did he marry a saloon girl or something and went to live in San Francisco. He did, uh, Josephine. Um, uh, the Kevin Costner film, I think, is very underrated. It's probably the most detailed, the most truthful of the of of Earp's yeah. show in Earp's career. But it had the bad fortune to come out at the same year as um, the Kurt Russell Tombstone, which, uh -huh. in terms of action and the actual gunfight and pacing, was a far superior film. All right, but. I love the Kevin Costner film. It's a, yeah. a favourite of mine. How long did it last? Then he lasted well into the 20th century, didn't he? Uh, 1929, he passed away at the age of 80. He died a, he? Died a very old man. Oh, he did, he did, that's right. Mm -hmm. 
And wasn't he involved in, in some fight or other? Uh, he was the referee in the ring. That's right. Uh, um, I can't remember the exact date. I'm terrible with dates. Um, it was Bob Fitzsimmons' um, big prize fight, and um, Earp was accused of um, throwing a fight in favour of Fitzsimmons because he had a lot of money riding on it. <laughs> She's quite right. a character. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, quite, yes. So, you, you, you know, any surprises now in this new information that's coming? I don't think it'll reveal anything particularly new, but it, it's great to see it again because um, it adds f- flesh on the bones of the story. But th- the court case that followed the, the gunfight, everything was so well documented. Yeah. The, the biggest bone of contention still to this day, and experts can't agree on it, is whether one of the, the cowboy faction, Tom McClory, was actually armed. Because they had to give their guns in at the end of town, didn't they? That was ordinance. Yeah. That was town ordinance eleven. That the guns had to be checked in um, as they come into town, and they they check them out as they um, as they left town. Yeah. All right. So one of them could. Well, he was unarmed, I suppose. He was. He got managed to get hold of it. Well, what had happened on the morning leading up to the fight? There was a saloon in Tombstall called the Occidental yeah. Saloon, and um, Ike Clanton had been drinking all night and playing poker. The poker game ended at seven a.m. in the morning. Um, uh, Virgil was one amongst them, was uh, Virgil was there. Now, Ike found that Virgil had had a gun trained on him throughout the fight. And he Under started, the table? Yeah, and mm-hmm. he started to get paranoid, thinking that there was yeah. a, a conspiracy with Wyatt and Dog all day, and he made some threats then. Yeah. And he proceeded to go around town all day in a drunken stupor, making threats. Um, at one point, he accosted Wyatt in the street and told him to prepare for a fight. Yeah. Um, th- then he went to leave town, got his weapon, but he didn't actually leave town. He came oh. back in and... And then the problems, but then yeah. he, and he went down in history. He did, yeah. Yeah, I shot him. I um, I should say, was a was a complete not a coward. He started the fight, but when the gunfight broke out, he ran away. Oh, um, he ran, and his brother died after the fight in, in hideous pain, and he wasn't even around then. Oh. Um, and he was killed years later for cattle wrestling. Shot, was he? shot by a sheriff, yeah. Oh, gosh, there we go then. Well, more now. More material for the legend of the OK Corral and what truly happened there, let me tell you. How's the writing going? I got your book here, Arkansas Smith. It's fine, it, yeah. It's, yes. um, Still going, the new stories? It's doing well, and um, <clears throat> I'm currently re- working on another Western, which you? we'll probably see late next year, and I've still got Policeman's Lot to come out towards the end of the summer. So oh, Well done, well done. And what's this? We're always after the Welsh connection for everything. You know, I went over to the Battle of the Bighorn to look for the Welsh connection. There was one there. Of course, there's a Welsh connection in the Alamo as well. We can't find a Welsh connection at the OK Corral. But you reckon now there's, there's a real Welsh connection with Billy the Kid? I do indeed. Um, I've got a friend um, through my writing, a, a gentleman named Fred Nolan. He's um, a world-renowned Billy the Kid expert. And uh, he wrote to me recently, um, a, a couple of people find it amusing that the Welshman writes westerns and they, they call my westerns taffy westerns as opposed to spaghetti westerns. <laughs> right. And he just wrote to me telling me that um, he's come up Cross a link to Billy the Kid's family right. um, on the Monmouth border, so really? he's researching into that at the moment. There we are. Hey, we're talking good research here now. We're talking quality people. Gary Dobbs said so, and I believe him. Billy the Kid was Welsh. Pass it on. Okay? <laughs> Unless you know better, of course. If you do, we're on 03 700 100 110. Well, text is 81012, and the email is roy.noble at bbc.co.uk. There we are. Gunfight at the OK Corral, more information now available, but still the legend remains. Gary, many thanks to you. Thank you very much. Big John. Big John.